What's up guys? It's your girl Stacy Cake, your host for What's Hot. And today I'm back with another trailer reaction. I know it's been a while, but life was life in, work was working, and good things were happening. But it's all good. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, and comment if you enjoy this type of content. And yeah, I'm ready to get into the trailer for Smile 2. So Smile 1, I was just really like not impressed but I wasn't unimpressed enough not to see smile too it's weird it's like to me it's a very interesting and curious movie and after we get into the trailer for this one I'm going to share with you guys some insight about the first one that you should take into watching the second one so let's get into it I need you to listen to me. Something really bad happened. You remember Louis Fergoli from high school? I went to his apartment. But when I showed up, Louis? No. No, it was actually crazy that he killed he himself smiling. with a weight. Like, that's insane. Ladies and gentlemen, Sky Riley, you are in the middle Drew of Brady. a big world tour. You okay? I keep seeing this face everywhere. This thing is a parasite. You witnessed a death. Now it's latched onto you. I've traced a string of deaths to you. Nobody has survived longer than a week. Sky, pull it together and get back out there. No, I will not let this thing use me. How do we stop it? We need to kill you first. What? Who gonna like that? Oh, kill her and bring her back to life. Wasn't this what they tried to do in Countdown? Like the trailers, they be nailing them, nailing these trailers, bro, nailing them. And that's exactly why. Let me get into it. This is exactly why I wanted to see the first one. Because they nailed the trailer. Literally nailed it. And then it's like, I went and saw the movie. And I just feel like it didn't, like the substance wasn't obvious. Put it that. I'm not going to say it lacks substance because I just read something that I'm like, okay. Like I get it. But I don't feel like, I feel like it could have been implied a little more or a little better. I don't know. So let's get into it. So my initial reaction was like, it's very, a very captivating trailer. This is trailer two, by the way, I had already watched trailer one. This is trailer two for the smile movie. So I'm like, okay, I already knew how the opening scene, how the guy died, smile, kill himself with the weight. Trailer two just elaborated on that, which was cool. But I felt like, I don't know, we could have got I mean, I guess she's the main character, so that's more. But I just pray they didn't, like, show the whole movie in the trailer. So my initial reaction was that we learned a lot from these two trailers. And I'm like, what more are you going to add to it um, at this point? Um, because I was a little bit disappointed when I watched the first one. And we didn't really get to the root of the curse we didn't really get to the root of the monster or the ghost of the spirit that's causing this this experience to happen now 
in preparation for this, I did read a Screen Rant article that said the creature is a metaphor. So the creature is a metaphor for like emotional trauma or something. Hold on y'all. So it's like a metaphor for like emotional suffering basically is what they're saying. So like I get that now kind of looking back and it was like okay like I get that but like when you're watching a horror movie yeah there's a deeper meaning to a lot of movies but I want to know what is this creature here for? Like, yes, it can have parallels. Yes, it can have metaphors. But the question still is, what is the root of the creature? Because at the end of the day, we still seen a monster in the first one. We didn't just see, like, ghosts. Or we saw a monster. So what is this monster? Because it's manifested as a monster in the movie. So I still feel like it was a whole or a cliffhanger it's a part two so let's say cliffhanger in the first from the first movie that i'm hoping that they explore in this one um i really like how they have taken it to a completely different industry as far as like the first film was like just an average woman with a normal job i think she was a, a it's been a while since i watched one i think she was a therapist or something like that um psychiatrist or something and then this is like a famous person like a famous pop star so we see how the disease or the curse is literally spreading to different industries and no one is off limits so now when i put into context the emotional the metaphor of emotional suffering and emotional trauma that that actually is like a big key no one is exempt from emotional trauma no matter how much money you have no matter what job you have no matter your connections no matter what like when you experience something traumatic it is going to impact you and a lot of the materialistic things the things that we focus on on a day-to-day -day, don't matter anymore um, so I think that is an important message. And now that I can put that into context, like I can put, I can look at it through the lens of the metaphor. Ding, ding, ding. It makes more like, it holds better weight in my heart as I judge this movie, as I criticize, you know, the film. Um, and I actually want to see the first one again because when I saw the first one, I was, like, disappointed. I didn't think it was that scary to be number one. Like, I feel like the scariest parts were in the trailer. Like, it was definitely creepy. Like, the creepiness is top tier. 10 out of 10. 5 out of 5 flames. Top tier. But... Just when we get into the root of the problem, we, we spent a lot of time not developing or revealing much, I felt like. We learned more, yes, about the main character's life and like history and like her childhood in the first one, but we really didn't get to the root of the curse besides that it was passed along from person to person. And then like the guy who didn't die or whatever the case may be. But it's just like... You know, like, I wanted more. I remember wanting more. And I'm going to watch the first one again before I go see Smile 2. Um, if you guys want me to do a movie review of Smile 2, let me know. But, um, yeah, I think, I hope that they uh, actually reveal more about the curse and they just don't let it fly on this metaphor that they seemingly aren't going to blatantly explain in any way or... They don't even have to blatantly explain. Like, the last movie, I have to again watch it again. But I feel like it could have been an explanation about... I mean, they kind of do in this trailer say, you witnessed the death and blah, 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 blah. So they hint at emotional suffering. I take that back. But you guys let me know if you felt like that metaphor was obvious when you watched the trailer of this one or when you watched the first smile. Did you get that the creature was a representation of emotional suffering? Did Was that obvious to you? Did you watch the movie or this trailer through that lens automatically? Or you didn't know that until I said it? Because I just feel like, like I'm a good person that analyzes and criticizes, like, um, I'm a good person that analyzes and, like, gets into the nooks and crannies of movies. So I feel like, yes, while I understand, like, it was emotional trauma happening and occurring to them after, naturally, I don't think 
that I chalked up the monster to being a representation of that. Like, I just don't feel like I did that because of the sinister way that the people started smiling and stuff. Like, first of all, what does the smile represent? Let's get into it. Let's get into it for real. Like, what does the smile represent? Um, yes, the creature, but what does the smile itself represent? Because the smile is very sinister. The smile to me, the, the feature of the smile does not channel emotional suffering to me. Like it's actually quite the opposite and it's actually evil. So maybe they're saying emotional suffering is evil, but it's inevitable. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Um, I'm excited to see like how they evolve and not just like repeat the same series of events. And then they're going to try to revive the main character, like kill her and bring her back. They tried to do that in the Netflix movie, uh, Fear Street. They tried to do that. So like, I feel like that's been done before. Um, they tried to kill the girl so that the evil people wouldn't kill her or whatever and bring her back. And hopefully that would end the curse. Like that was done in Fear Street. And I want to say it was done in Countdown too, if I'm not mistaken. If you guys remember Countdown, the movie Countdown with um, my girl from you. Uh, oh, crap. Y'all, I forget names terrible. What was her name? Uh, that Joe Goldberg was obsessed with in the first you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Whatever. This has nothing to do with you. But, um... Becky, Becca Ann, whatever her name was from the first you, the blonde girl. She was in Countdown and she, I think they was trying to do that too. Like kill off somebody so that the curse would end or whatever the case may be and bring them back. I don't know. But yeah, I just feel like that concept has been done before. So, I mean, I feel like, I mean, it's only so many routes they can take and I don't know when this script was written. But I feel like they really gonna have to, like, they can't let that be the way out. And then the fact that they already revealed that in the trailer is kind of annoying. Like, I feel like, save a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, like if I'm already getting the milk, why am I buying a cow? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm gonna still go see it. But generally, like, the general public, like, why like you told them the whole movie for real so if they don't have a plot twist in there that anchors the people that go see this movie and get them to talk about it i feel like it might not do well let me know in the comments if you plan on seeing smile too make sure you like share subscribe and comment on this video and i will see you guys in the next one